recording. So uh, if you are the type who I who checks the schedule every week, as I hope you are, you'll notice a, a giant change. Um, this week, we should um, be filming Ava's film tomorrow, but Tim and I had um, some meetings and then I met with her and she just was not ready. Um, and much of her film is supposed to be shot outside or was supposed to be shot outside tomorrow here on campus, but it's gonna be raining. And uh, we hadn't really scouted the locations. She talked to a few people. She talked to you, Jason, about DPing, but um, it was a 14 page script. And to do more than about five or six pages in a day is not realistic. It's crazy. I think we would have had to have a like an eight o'clock call time and, and gone until they kicked us off campus. I just don't know if it would have been Especially possible. Yeah. yeah. And um, since, since then, she's cut her script down from 14 to about seven pages. And so we will be able to do it. We're actually going to shoot it um probably one of the first projects next semester so if you're in the class next semester you'll get to to shoot this one with us it's going to be all shot on steadicam um the, it's going to be one continuous shot from um, on the other side of the bridge um all the way to the parking lot um and so the actors have to be completely off book and be able to you know stay in character the entire time cool. and um we're gonna shoot it from several angles, but all steady cam. A two shot with, I'm probably gonna be the steady cam operator, but a two shot me going backwards and then one from me behind them is a two shot me going forward. And then we'll do singles in profile. And so we can you know, cut it all together. But the entire film is um, this one long uh, conversation. And so I'm kind of excited about it, but we were not ready to shoot tomorrow. So what we're doing um, for Gab TV News, we're gonna do interviews with some of the filmmakers for the Do Not Disturb, which is premiering on Saturday. And I hope you're all coming, you're all invited. Uh, you can see what other um, Gab students have done in the past, making a feature film. Every single filmmaker, um, is now working down in Hollywood. Geo, Samantha, not Sophie. Sophie's the one who's um, going to be on her way soon, but uh, she's still here. Um, and you, we worked with her this semester a couple of times. Um, she acted for Tim's film. She was the femme fatale. Um, but um, Samantha, Geo, Grady, they all um, are working. Um, down in Hollywood and and Grady's acting down there and such. So um, some of them, Grady and um, Sophie and I will be there. Powell is going to come to the party if you're coming to the party afterwards. Um, and then uh, a lot of the actors, um, some of them, some of the actors will be in, are, live in, in London and are filming, they're on set. Um, but uh, Sarah, who we've worked with, um, and uh, Geraldine, and Ron and Estrella, and Aaron will all be there. So some of the actors, and those names and those faces will become way more familiar once you see the the uh, film. By the way, Jason was our official trailer editor. So if you've seen the trailer, um, how many have seen that's Jason's work that yeah, his um, his doing. Um, oh, I what time uh, and the logistics? Like, do we pay to get in? All that stuff. What time should we be there? Yeah, um, it is a two o'clock um, screening, and it's a movie theater. They have a schedule to keep, and I told them that we want a little extra time for Q and A afterwards. So my guess is they're going to start promptly at two. Okay. So you need to, to get there early. You can um, get tickets now or on um, at the door when you mm -hmm. arrive, but they're assigned seating. So if right. I don't know how many tickets are going to sell, it's in a large, their largest theater. Um, and you can see what's available um, and what has already sold. But um, uh, 
yeah, today, yeah. So Cinelux and Morgan Hill, the theater starts at two. Yeah. I don't know if you guys are aware. Last I saw the website, like the description was all weird. Yeah. Um. So first of all, they had the wrong image. It was of a film already called Do Not Disturb. Yeah, it's called Do Not Disturb, but it's it's I think from Mexico or Spain or something. And then they showed the trailer for that film, and it was in all in Spanish, and all of the names were the you know crew and cast from that film. They've changed the picture, so it's now our poster. Um, they have changed the name, so it's the cast and crew who will be at the premiere. But I still don't think our trailer is up. So um, it's they better show the right film. <laughs> oh no, they are. Um, I'm supposed to have a a screening yeah. ahead of time, um, but at this point, they were supposed to do that a while ago, and they're dragging their feet. So I'm really hoping because there's not a lot can be done in a short the short time, um, and there are issues with is how bright is their projector, what color, um, you know, is there you know, there's there's variety in changes. So um, I'm hoping it it all goes well because I haven't had a, an opportunity to to check it out. But um, anyways, if you want to come to the after party, it's at my house. We've shot there before um, and you know, get to know some of the uh, filmmakers or, or actors. So uh, Marty's coming, right? She's ignoring me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, tomorrow, if you want to come, uh, we are doing just about an hour of interviews um, with Sophie and Grady and me and Tim's doing it. It's from, I think it's two to three. Is, um... It's now 50 minutes, maybe. So it starts at 2.10. No, 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 I'm not, the, not the film. I'm talking about uh, the, the interviews tomorrow. Oh, okay. Um, I'm ch checking out the production schedule, which is up, and I try to revise it constantly. So the call time is one, but I think we're filming from two to three. So depending on the weather, if it's raining, we have to do it inside or under an eave or something. Um, so we're going to be setting up lighting, setting up sound um, and stuff like that. Oh, and that be posted on those? It is. For oh, no, no, no. Home? No, no. Okay. We won't even shoot, shoot. We won't even shit. Um, we won't even shoot at BTS because um, it's going to be a quick setup, okay. and 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 then then they're just interviews. Yeah. And we'll we'll this will become a Gab TV news story, the premiere, and then the, the film. Interviews. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. Possibly, is anyone wants to stay busy? It might be fun to have um, kind of BTS at the theater and then at the party if anyone wants to operate a camera for a couple minutes um even if we all do it for a minute or two we have a little bit of footage of the event but anyway so tomorrow um i was saying the call time could be one and we are not going past 3 30 um and so we're just going to do the quick interviews um and it's at my house, and then the after party for Saturday is also at my house. So that's what's happening this weekend. It's a lighter weekend. Um, on March 29th, um, our, the following shoot is Grief. Is it Grief or Grief is non-negotiable? I like that title. Because I got it from a quote, so I think now. Grief is non-negotiable? Yeah. Okay. You said you like longer titles too, right? Yeah. Um, you and I should meet after this mm -hmm. um, to start planning um, a bit. Um, and do you have all of your crew picked? No, um, I thought you were going to talk to Ashton. Okay, we need to have mm -hmm. that kind of decided really fast. Mm -hmm. And have, is it completely cast? What do you mean? Like, have I... Like all the actors? No. Oh. So it's a week away. We... I know, um, I just don't know anybody. Um, 
because actors need time to learn lines and you know set schedules and and things like that. Um, and have you decided whether you want a man or a woman? I mean, if action's down, then man has a main character. Um, so yes. yes. Um, let's talk afterwards. Mm -hmm. Um, because we have to have an age appropriate significant other too. So, okay. Okay. um, yeah, let's. It's also it's someone who's living on the road, so it's like their majority is going to be just the main character. There's but what I'm saying is, nothing. they're not living with parents. No, they're on their own. On their own. So it's somebody in their late twenties or thirties. Yeah. Um, and have their own apartment or house. It's actually yeah. going to be shot in my house. Mm -hmm. It's hard to make my house look like a yeah, yeah. a small little. Yeah. Starter home, you know. Yeah. Luckily, I'm not going to show much of your house. Just the, the dining room table and then the hallway leading to the guest bedroom. That's majority and your front door. But you have to dress everything down. else, the living room. <laughs> I'm not going to shoot those forces it's going to be. And it's the the thing yeah, too is that keep in mind that um, we've shot. It was was it last year we shot at my house. The, the two years during COVID, everything we shot was in my house or my backyard. There was nothing that wasn't. And it started to become like a running joke. Every, next time, oh, there's his house, there's the stairs, there's his kitchen, there's, I mean, um, and that house was a little more dis, you know, distinctive. It was less, yeah. um, uh, but um, we've seen this house in Blueberry um, for Marty's film. We've seen it in Leaving for Jason's film. Let's see. Yeah, unforeseen. unforeseen. The nice thing is that unforeseen is just the one table shot, but it's there, and we do see um, uh, in in Blueberry she comes inside there. We saw in Southern Bliss too. Yeah, the nice thing that that yeah. was really smart that um, Sophie did is she trashed that room, um, and not <laughs> um, she brought in a car full of junk. Yeah and put it everywhere and my wife had no idea that that was our room so um it was i mean and it was back to normal 15 minutes after we shot but um she put stuff on the wall and covered stuff and it was it was the character was very um disorganized or a hoarder or yeah uh, yeah a hoarder and it, it just kept everything and and it was everything was disheveled and um, so lot, lots of stuff. Oh, you're about to walk in. All right. Okay. Um, so let's talk afterwards, um, about all of that. Um, and next week, a week from tomorrow, we're shooting your film. Um, so we need to make sure we get that all, all completed. Got to have a shot list if it's not already done. I'm working on it because uh, I had a meeting with uh, Jason and I kind of screwed up where apparently, what I do, I divided shots? Or... Yeah, you just divided positions. So it, he did what I did when we first started where he was just reading through the script and it's like one person says, uh, has their dialogue and then it goes another person and he's uh, and then it goes back to the other person. Oh, you must have person. had like 80 shots. Yeah. That's that what, exactly what he yeah. had. He, yeah. he probably has like six shots in a scene on average. But okay, but how many scenes are there? There was like eight or something like that. But oh. eight times six is no, still... No, 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 no yeah. but there's like some scenes that have like two shots to work. Oh, okay. So you said, okay, good. All right. There's probably 20 shots. Yeah. Marty, we're filming. Marty, you <laughs> ruined the shot. Um, okay. So uh, let me know if you have any questions about the schedule. I'm trying to, I, I always either Friday night or Saturday morning update it. And then as soon as I get a notice, like, I had a conversation with Ava, I think it was either last night or the night before, and immediately I updated the schedule and you can see that um, her film is uh, off the, the schedule. Um, 
And I know that I'm a little nervous. I haven't seen Ariel in a while. And so I haven't seen Off the Trail. I'm really excited about that one, but I haven't seen the script. Vanessa, I haven't seen uh, Vanessa's um, script. Um, I have seen uh, Ashton's, she's mine. That, that's going to be an action fight scene that we're shooting just after spring break. So, um, you know, we're, we've got our next two ready to go. Uh, and then um, I'm excited because I know Marty's uh, got a really cool concept film and I'm really excited about that. And then Sophie's doing a kind of a, um, what's the the movie Eddie Murphy that, where he played every character? Um, oh, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I think it's going to be... The, or Mama said. <laughs> but but in the nutty professor um there the he played the same character um and i think he even played a, a woman too um and um so in that sophie's gonna have an actress who plays multiple characters having conversations with each other and such so we're gonna shoot that and i haven't seen the script yet but we talked about it a bit so um we have some fun ones coming up um but anyways i'll keep updating the schedule let's talk now about um yeah norbit thanks yeah. um oh yeah. right norbit so he did a few of those where he played multiple characters. yeah yeah but not an easy thing to do different no. voices and um uh coming to America, he did the same thing. Yeah, that's, right. um, yeah. that's one of my favorite. And they he, you know, he plays he plays the the main character, but then he goes down and he plays he's the barber. Yeah, I was gonna say he plays the barber. Um, he plays like at least uh, one of the characters like that sit in the barber too. Actually. Yeah, it's the oh, Jewish my. white Jewish character. Yeah. That, um he's so awesome. Yeah, so um, anyways, let's talk about uh, the not only the red, but also the main thing is the lenses and also pulling focus. So um, I'm going to turn on the red and then we're going to start talking um, about it. I leave the 35 millimeter um, on the red camera. Um, when I store it, because it's the one that we most that we use most often. Um, but someone tell me the the difference between the thirty five millimeter and the twenty five millimeter. They're both DZO lens. That's the the maker. It's the most expensive lens um, I have. So what is um, different between these two similar lenses by the you know, same maker? But one's a 35 millimeter and one's a 25. They cover some range. So um, the first term you need to know is uh, I only use, I have 10 zoom lenses and they just are sitting in boxes in a closet and I almost never touch them. On a movie set, we almost never use zoom lenses. For a lot of things, zoom lenses are incredibly convenient and uh, they're, they can be very helpful. But for movie sets, we don't. We use prime lenses. So what is a prime lens? It doesn't zoom. Yeah, um, it is one focal length. So I have a zoom lens that is 24 to 105. It can be at the 24 all the way up to the 105. So I can zoom in and zoom out. You can't do that with the prime. So can you see the image? Yeah. And someone frame, come frame me, would you please? Yeah. No, that do it. First of all, make sure the tripod is level. No, I'm kidding. And what's the rule when when thinking about framing? Rule of thirds. Yeah, rule of thirds. So framing, I'm I'm. We're talking about um, grief 
is non-negotiable. So if I'm looking in this direction, where do you want to frame? Upper right. Upper right. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I'm only getting a kind of what they're seeing at home, but it's looking like my eyes should be on the upper third. Yeah. And I'm looking in this direction. So I should be, there should be room on this part of the frame. Right. So you're leading me um, in that direction. Okay, so it's framed well. Um, now, if the director said, I want a tighter shot on Grant, he's so good looking that we just have to, <laughs> um, let's go the opposite. <laughs> that dude is ugly as snot, and we cannot be that close to him. We need to pull wider. Um, can you zoom out? No. Not on this lens. No, not on the lens. Yeah, this is not a zoom lens. This is it. This is all you get. So if you want to um, make it a wider shot, make me smaller in the frame, you need to truck the camera yeah. backwards. Yeah. So you actually have to physically pick up the camera and move it so that it's farther away. Or if you want a closer uh, shot of me, you need to move it forward. Mm -hmm. But what we quite often do are limited in our space on set. We want to give our actors uh, room to move, or we, you know, are look, trying to get a specific uh, feel. So we don't zoom in or out. We change lenses. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a thirty-five millimeter. If I wanted it wider, what lens might we want to use? The 25. 25. Okay, you know that we have the 25. Um, Raleigh, will you go get the, the 25? It's right behind you. Um, by the way, when he brings the 25 to you, what is the process? What is, we've talked about lens swaps oh, a lot. Two people. It Jeez. tends to be a two-person um, job, job, for sure. Yeah. Um, well, he's taking it off. The first AC um, and the second AC work together to get the lens. The first AC brings it to the DP. <laughs> and you don't throw stuff on the ground. Yep. It's, um, 25? 25, yeah. <clears throat> so the director has said, um, Grant is just ruining the shot. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, what do you do? Lens swap. No, leave the lens cap no, on. Leave, yeah. Where did the other lens cap go? I put it on the lens case. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Um, we'll cover this. We'll cover that lens. Then one of you will remove the other lens, and the other person, you're basically going to hand her the, the end cap mm -hmm. and she will put it on that and you will put on the lens. And you remember the way you line it up is there's a red dot, um, which you can't see until you remove that mm -hmm. cap, but- um, the red screw. Yeah, so there's a, there's a so collar that you loosen first. Oh, okay. Yeah, you loosen the collar and that's counterclockwise. And you can see that it loosens then there's that button, and then you turn the lens counterclockwise, and right away put that on the cover. And then right. Yep. Yep. Until it clicks, it has to be flat. Did it click? I don't hear. No. Did it? It's turning. Yeah, right because there's a little bit of resistance. You can't. Anyways, uh, so it's locked in. Yeah. Now, um, can one of you put the lens down uh, and then the other one get me in focus? Here, oh, perfect. Am I still framed okay? No. So 
one of the things that we need to decide is, um, am I still ruining the shot or am I farther enough, far enough away? You're further away. Yeah, you're further I'm away. definitely farther away because it's a 25, but damn, Grant is just too ugly. You need him let's, farther away. Let's put on a 14. So we're going to go to a 14. Yep. So, and, and uh, you, you got to make lens, lens changes. So, you, again, you want to make sure you have the lens cap. Um, and I can't really see the image, those of you who are looking at it. Um, my guess is that you're seeing now more of the background. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is maybe for an establishing shot. It's the same thing. Yeah. Yep. So again, remove the, the collar and then the, the button and then, then quickly put the cap on it. This cap is a little different, the, the lens cap. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Much wider. Much wider. You can see the whole room now. It's more wide angle. She's a DP in your. Okay, yeah. for Stacey. You got it. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, wide um, the 20 is as wide as you can go without getting some kind of fisheye look. And if you actually look at the lens, those of you who are here, come do it because I don't think the Sony can catch it. But stand up, you lazy. Kind of so fast. Um, look at the, the lens. Look at the end of the, see the lens? It's oh, not wow. flat. It's yeah. rounded. So to get that um, wider image, the glass is actually um, rounded, rounded um, which gives it a fisheye look. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but there are times when we do a steady cam shot, um, and we want because this allows me to move really close to get in close shots or to, to, to have a much wider shot. So, um, the 14 um, can be effective, but now if you look at me, I'm significantly smaller than uh, I was with the 35, right? Mm -hmm. It's much more of the room. Okay, now let's do the 135. So that was a 14. That's a 14. Okay. We're going to go on an extreme. We don't use this lens very often, but it, uh, we used it when we did the um, shot uh, for Silent Charm across the street, correct? Uh, 135? Yeah. Yeah, we did. So um, this now is significantly closer. And we did this when our subject was probably 100, 150 feet away. Um, and it made for a cowboy. The camera now is probably eight feet away from me, something like that. So what do you imagine the, the difference is going to be now? Way more close. Yeah, is that it's all locked? Yeah. Whoa. This is a what? So now you have to frame it correctly. Focus. focus. Yeah. So how do you how do you focus? Edge. Can I truck it? No, no, no. You can pan and tilt. You can't truck because the whole point is to. Now just need to flip it. Whoa. Yeah. Let yeah. Let's focus. Um. You know how to focus, right? The, the closest ring on the. No, it's too close. No, that's after. Yeah. This is the 135? 135. Wow. This is like your head is like most of the frame. Yeah, so so no comments about <laughs> how flawed my face is. Um, I have a Whoa. I have a zoom lens that's two hundred to nine hundred. So you imagine if I was at nine hundred, you'd be looking 
at my pupils. Um, you got high yeah. blood sugar. Yeah, you're good right there. <laughs> um, wow, that makes me look like a grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Woo! Wow. So you can see the difference. We went from a 14 to a 135. And th that's in my lens kit, what we have. Um, so clear. Four shots. Like what we did with across the street. Yeah. Oh, far right. if you want to look at So yeah. I have a 200 to 900. And um, oftentimes, like, I'll take it to a football game when I'm in the stands. Yeah. And I yeah. want to be able to zoom in and look at. You get a better. Yeah. Um, someone on the opposite sideline yeah. or yeah. whatever. So this one zooms. No, no. this is no, a one thirty-five. Do it itself. Oh, okay. Because I, I thought you. She had to. Oh, she had to full focus it. She did yeah. magnify. Yeah. Oh, uh, to to get focus. Get better focus. Essentially, it crops in. It 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 punches in so that remember the uh, the way you focus on a zoom lens is you zoom all the way in, full focus to get it right. And then zoom back to the the focal length you want. Mm. You can't do that on with prime lenses. So right. cameras, good cameras, have a magnify um, option where it allows you to um, basically zoom way in so that you can. So put that magnify on again, would you? So this this is what the camera does. It's showing you. Whoa, oh, man! So you can see everything. <laughs> Quick, take it off. Get it off. Get it off. It there. <laughs> um, but oh, so if you look in that in the upper right hand corner, there's a there's a square of the frame, yeah, okay. and then there's a red dot. That is what you're looking at. Is essentially zooming into that red section. So, um, anyways, this is how you uh, make sure that your image is in section. I mean, this image is in focus. So, um, know that. Um, prime lenses are better than zoom lenses in that they have better glass at that one focal length. Um, they a 35 millimeter lens does better at capturing an image at 35 millimeter than any zoom lens does, but it doesn't do all the other focal lengths and. So instead of every single time you want to change the framing a little bit um, by you know getting a little closer or a little back, you can make a quick change with the zoom and it's done. Um, or if you want to zoom within the shot, you have a slow zoom in or zoom out. Um, you see that a lot in um, older films, like in the 60s and 70s. Zooms uh, were really common. Uh, I just taught um, The Graduate. Have any of you seen The Graduate? Mm -hmm. Just two of us? You've got to see more movies. Um, but anyways, in The Graduate, there are 30, 50 shots probably with zooms in them, where the, the camera is zooming in on something or zooming out. Um, uh, it's something that is really seems amateur now. Um, in films, so in, in movies, we just almost never zoom. We do digital pushes or we do dollies um, if you want move, uh, moves, but not zooms. So, and we so really... a digital push is that in editing where mm -hmm. you're able to mm -hmm. push it? So, we shoot in 6K with this camera, and that's really high resolution. So, you can um, punch in. Um, to reframe or do a digital slow zoom throughout a shot mm. and it you can't really even tell the, the difference in resolution. Wow. So as it, long as the image is in focus. If I'm a little soft, all it does is exaggerate the flaw. Yeah. So like editing then is like fixing all the problems in a way. Some of it's fixing, but some of it, I mean, how many times Jason and Marty and I, we've we've said uh, we can we can punch in and post. I mean, the idea is quite honestly, um, this is now a bad lens for this as example, but 
um, we could have, let, let's put the 35 back on too, because that's the workhorse. Um, and if you haven't done this, you should be watching or doing it yourself. But um, I'm gonna, we're gonna look at a shot where we could do, uh, and we've done this type of thing in the um, uh, Gab TV News. Um, by the way, I, I never remove lenses from the side like you're doing this. Yeah, I would face the lens. So that you can, yeah, that's that's a more profitable position. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I was wondering why we're not doing the got it thing, and it's because we have different people. No, they should never hand off a lens out. You should not let go until someone says got it. Right, but, but since they're not handing it off, right, are not doing the whole got it thing. They should if they if they are not letting go of it to somebody else. You don't have to. Right, right. But as soon as you hand something to somebody, yeah. you have to say, got it. <laughs> right. I got Tim the other day when we were filming um, The Runaway. Um, the battery was low and we were doing a hot swap. And right. I held the battery out and he went to grab it. And I, I didn't let go. He was like, oh, got it. <laughs> <laughs> and so I let go. Um, okay, so this is a 35. Um, you know what? This is, imagine, this is through the front windshield of a car. So, yeah. So, we're on um, a gate in this movie. We're driving along, and is it, this is a two shot. I can't see. <laughs> and what do they, they, the they, they call that? The, the, the mom arm. It just comes out. Yeah, but what, what's that called the, when you. The safe. Yeah, there was a Seinfeld episode about that. Or, no, I said the mom arm. Yeah, but, the, uh, yeah. but anyways, I know what. Um, I always do that. But are we in focus? No. How do I look? No, we're figuring it out. How's my hair? It's a little bit there. What is the aperture? Is that 2.1? But that, that's too far. Are you in the are you in the focus assist? I mean are you in the edging? And this is how I really oh, drive them. <laughs> so you, you have to make sure the audience so you can move the camera up to look at their eyes. And then you go, hey, so, baby. Pss, pss. <laughs> So she looks like it's getting there, but uh, keep keep your focus. Other way, other way. There you go. Baby, there we go. you can drive the car. So can you take those off so I can see the framing? Okay, so we're both in this shot. And I can only get a kind of a glimpse of it. But we could, with 6K, um, capture this and then punch in to get just one of us in a frame. If that makes sense. Now, I don't love the angle. How would you shoot this? If we were having a nap, we parked, and she's hitting on me. Ah! <laughs> uh, Whatever. <laughs> it's a movie. We're acting. So you wish. <laughs> I know, but I'm saying it's the movie. So we're we're in this scene. Um, how would you shoot this? A two shot makes sense either to be through the the windshield or from the back seat. Mm -hmm. But okay, let's say the two shot. You know, we're in a drive-in movie theater and we're uh, um, we're watching a movie. Kind of dating us. Or me. Um, <laughs> how else would you shoot this? I've only been in the trunk at the break. <laughs> the break. <laughs> okay. The over the shoulder would work. Um, let's say we, we want singles. We have our two shot. We want singles. How would you shoot this? You could move, truck the camera forward, and frame it so she's just in straight on. Yeah, I was gonna say like at an angle, you could just kind of do you, right? 
Okay, but imagine where it hit the car. We brought lots of cars into the studio here through the elephant doors. Um, how would, if we have the car in the studio and we've shot through the windshield and okay, we've got our two shots, let's get our singles. How are we going to do it? I would go through each window, like yeah. by the side, now, side mirrors. Right. Through the windows. If we want to shoot her, we would go through my side window oh, okay. and get her in profile. Okay. So when she's looking at me and batting her eyes, look, at it's right where the camera is. Yeah. And the same thing. If uh, I'm looking at her, um, <laughs> now we have the, the shot of me. So we have the two shot and then we have the two um, profile shots. If we were going to shoot it from behind, um, we would do the two shot probably from the back seat, and then we would do kind of an over the shoulder. Um, you at me. Window, like the, the passenger window. I, if you're going to be inside uh, the car for the two shot in the back seat, I would also be in the car, just cheat it from one side to another. Yeah. Okay. Um, but essentially, what I'm saying is, is that. And every one of these is going to be a, a lens change. Um, but with a 6K camera, with this, we could punch in and get my single straight on and her single straight on. Mm -hmm. I probably would would want to shoot it as singles as well, but not, not always. You'd have to, you've got the, the length of the hood. And so uh, this might be something that I would do a 50 or an 85. If that makes sense. So, anyways, what I was saying is, that here's a two shot, and um, if I was going to do a single, you could use the two shots to get um, and punch in and post to get the single straight on. Does that make sense? All right. Yeah. Let's talk about focus because um, thank you so much for being well, good sport about it. Um, Let's do uh, not the remote follow focus, the standard follow focus. It's not ideal always to touch the lens mid take. So um, Jason's going to um, set it up. Okay. And um, let's, in fact, I'm going to operate the Sony. And this is even less about the image now, more about the camera. So all of you here should be in there looking. So I've got the red has rails right here. And so you just push it on these two pockets right here, push it in. And then they'll have the camera has groove right here. And so it matches on the focus right here. So you just oh, put it on top, connect it. So it adds on these rails and then you just lock it in. So this is uh, the X axis right here. And then this is uh, the middle corner, uh, the middle one right here uh, mm -hmm. locks in. Nothing. So was that already there or did you add it there? What? The follow focus. Is that the follow focus? So, yeah, so the, the, mm -hmm. this is that, the follow focus right here. So I just put it on the rails and just pushed it out right here. But these are key frames. The remote, so the remote follow focus this right here, you're talking about the green or are you talking about no, this the whole arm? No, that whole thing, was it already there? The or? whole arm itself is connected. Okay. So so it goes on these rails and then you just connect it. Okay, and you just, you're getting it to grab onto the teeth. So yes, uh, the teeth and the lens okay. right here. Can you turn it towards the Sony? And so you can see now, can you actually pull focus and you can see how the handle um, spins the focus ring. What's nice about this is that it, it has a few different rings on there. It also has an aperture ring. Can you point to that? It's right here. Yeah. That's so that's one. you can change aperture um, mid take. So if the camera was dolling outside inside you could have um, a focus puller or focus ring actually you know, changing aperture um, so he's going to slide it up the rails um, the other thing a zoom lens has another set of rings 
and um, it can um, have another uh, ab the ability to zoom uh, on the side without actually touching the lens as well. So um, this is very, very common on set to have um yeah so oh so he, he's messing yeah. with the uh, lights yeah and, and so it's basically opening and closing the aperture oh okay okay um why yeah, it's turn. Right. So, yeah so. And so typically we do this ahead of time we don't adjust aperture mid shot but when might we if mm -hmm. i'm gonna say I, I usually feel like i've seen him like do something like that like during like the end of like a movie or or Someone that I think what you're talking about is done in post. Okay. I'll give you a great example. I had a, a scene once that I shot in a movie called Danish Dreams. And my actress came from outside. The camera was inside. Mm -hmm. And she opened the door, the front door, and all the sunlight spilled in. And then she closed the door. So if I set it so that it looked good when the door was closed, when she opened it, all it was was white. Ooh. If we made it look good so that the um, outside looked good, so that it wasn't so overexposed when she opened the door, then it's absolutely black inside. Mm -hmm. So what we actually did was adjust the aperture for the shot. As the door opened, the aperture closed. And as it closed, then we closed the aperture. And so it adjusted for the amount of light coming in. It doesn't happen very often, but it's a, a, a nice lenses have that ability. But you have to do it manually, right? Right. Okay. Because yeah. I was having a problem with that in the video. I was trying to figure out how to get that white blurriness from my like, window. So yeah. Inside. The other thing is, on, on film cameras, everything is designed to be manual. Uh, the Sony, which is what you all, all you are watching right here, a lot of this is done on auto. So auto zoom, auto aperture, it, it auto uh, audio. And I've never used that before, but Tim set that up for the yeah. concert um, on Saturday. Um, it just goes against my nature because in film uh, production, you never ever do that because no computer is smart enough to get it all right. Mm -hmm. it, it's searching to figure out what should, it should focus on. The light might, if I were to tilt this up at a light, um, it's, gonna try to re, re, uh, uh, it's trying to adjust. And if you, none of you can see the image unless you're here, but yeah. it, it's adjust it because I'm shooting it into a bright light. And then if I quickly come down, everything's black and it's got to try to adjust. Um, so um, it's nice for um, run and gun type um, filmmaking, but you know, in film, we we want the control to be able to do that ourselves. So the last thing we're going to do today is the remote follow focus. So um, this is the kind of go to method for a lot of things, but. Um, I think we're going to have a steady cam shot before the, the semester is up. And if I happen to have the steady cam shot suit on and I'm doing the shot, I can't pull focus. All I'm thinking about is framing. So if I am uh, moving back and forth, um, so look at frame this, um, frame the TV so you can see and actually put it on my face. Um, if the camera's um, on a subject and the, and, the, and the actor is doing this type of thing, um, you know, yeah, float with me. So you, um, so she might keep me in frame if I'm pacing, but then if I do this type of thing, aren't I going in and out of focus? Yeah. Yeah. So someone's job has to pull focus. Now on a steady cam, the camera's floating. And you can't touch the camera or as it affects the whole balance of everything. So we have to use a remote follow focus. Or, for example, we, we used the jib a few times on Tim's shoot um, last Friday. The camera's 8, 10, 12 feet in the air. How are you going to reach up and pull focus for that? Right? Yeah. So yeah. what did we do? Those of you who were here, what did we do? 
you use the jib? Yep, yeah, the camera's way up on the jib. How are we pulling focus? Oh, remote focus. Yeah, yeah. we're going to use the remote follow focus. So the last thing we're going to show you today is the remote follow focus. And so when you say, did bring it? Uh, I didn't see what it was doing. Oh no. When I am, when you say, when you say steady cam, how are you moving the camera? So the the steady cam oh, so is on, yeah. that goes oh, on, the on your body. Yeah. There's an arm that comes out of the stomach like this, and it has like springs that keep the camera floating. So the camera sits on right. this vest okay. and it moves with the person. So your steady cam operator may be like moving so like this you're following or your following our subjects okay. around like that type of thing. What, what's nice right. about it is it absorbs all of the movement. So if you're running with the steady cam, you might be, you know, how you run, the, the camera's floating, but the arm is going like this to yeah, absorb it, everything so the camera just floats. So the um, point of it is to remove that handheld feel. Like when we have a handheld camera, yeah, uh, we've all it's seen it. jerky. Yeah, it feels jerky. We don't see it as much in our phones anymore because there's built-in uh, stabilization. Right. But like with, if you took the Sony and you held it in one hand and just walked around, your image is right. gonna move like this. Oh well, yeah, the spray and how the, uh, uh, steady cam is designed, those it counterbalances it like made for movement. the way we move, right? Humans are yeah. these bend and make us go up and down, right? right. And that joint. this allows us to float, have the camera float, right? Right, right, yeah. And you've seen, seen it, you've seen it a ton of times, yeah. Thank you. It's yeah. becoming more and more common gimbals and, and steady, steady cams. Cam. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. A lot of films were shot almost exclusively, you know. Uh, so, like this film that you have to film completely on steady cam, you're following some subjects walking or something, right? So we're going to absolutely use the remote follow focus. The other thing that we're going to have to do is the audio is going to need to go mobile because we're going to be going six hundred yards. So the person who's uh, have to walk. Yeah, it's going to be a, a, a long. So like the boom has to walk. And the, the, the audio and mixer the boom, will have a strap the and audio hold, thing. hold the mixer here on the wow. hip, and we'll have headphones and be walking. And walk, yeah. The boom yeah. operator is going to have to have the boom above and walking. Wow. Um, and walking, then they'll probably both yeah, have walking. lavaliers, which are wireless already. So yeah. You have to stay in range of the right of the uh, recorder. So. Right, right. So that'll all be happening. But the steady cam is moving now. I have not met an actor who can um, hold pace with the steady cam. Just doesn't happen. They start walking too fast, or they slow down, or they they don't have a mark and they suddenly stop. Well, I don't know they're going to stop, so I might take an extra couple right. of steps. How do we keep that in focus? Yeah, yeah. That's where somebody that doesn't. I don't want it to be me because. Pulling focus is the hardest job on set, I believe. Mm. Um, someone's going to have to keep that. Now, one of the things that we will often do is use deep focus. And what does that mean? And why would we want deep focus? Uh, focus underwater. Focus easier yeah, to... deep, deep underwater. No. Um, so deep focus actually started with Orson Welles in Citizen Kane. Mm. Deep focus is it's a sled. <laughs> yeah, rosebud. Yeah. Um, it is um, a wider range of focal distance. So right now I'm in. I'm in. Am I in focus? Yeah. Yeah. R I mean, just roughly. I'm, I'm yeah. in focus. Yeah. If I step here, am I still in focus or now I'm out of focus? Okay, so there's a shallow depth of field, and which is, you often see in films. You know, you we, you could film both Tim and me at the same time, and if I'm in focus, Tim would be blurry, or if Tim were in focus, I'd be blurry. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's a shallow depth of field. It only it only yeah. is a a few inches to a foot or something. Depth of field is the term that re represents how much is our things in focus. Now, I'm sure you've seen shots where everything looks like in focus, right? So that's our deep or wide depth of field. That means everything in the shot, like if you put on a, a wide lens and you're getting a shot of a cityscape, everything is going to look in focus. 
Uh, but if you have a narrow depth of field, uh, and especially like the prime lenses here always have a, a certain focal length, that's going to determine your depth of field and what you want is in focus. Because sometimes we do want Grant in focus and Tim out of focus because Grant's the focus of our piece. Yeah. Or are the two of us talking and you want to see both of us in focus? That's decisions you make as a DP, as a director. What, what, what are you telling in your story? For example, we're taking turns talking right now. If you had us both framed in here, can you frame me on the left and Tim on the right? So we're both, our, our, okay, there you go. So for both in this um, shop right now, I'm the one doing the talking. So you'd probably focus on me, put the edging on so you can actually see it. So you, you focus on me. Now suddenly I stop talking and Tim talks. Or Grant's talking and I'm rolling my eyes and the focus is like how boring Grant's <laughs> talking is. So you focus on me or I start talking and then you, you, can, you can go in a shot. Maybe you're going to go back and forth. You can rack the focus, which is going from subject to subject. Yeah. So, uh, and that's helped tell the story. So that's who the director wants you to be looking at at the time. Because the director is not only directing the actors and the shots, but it's directing the audience, telling the audience, pay attention to this. That's why we get shots of certain props that are key elements, right? Like if, if there's a knife, we want to show the knife before the person gets stabbed because we want to establish that there's a knife in the room or a gun or whatever we're going to do. You can finish that. But um, so we will often wrap. But when it comes to steady cam, I will often um, try to go with a deeper focus so that if there is a mistake by a few feet, not, now suddenly the take's not wasted because um, yeah. there was a, a, a few frames or a yeah, second or whatever of uh, footage that's out of focus. Well, and when we did the jib, how hard was that second jib? Uh, it Jason? took a couple of minutes to really yeah. And it's it. one of those things where you have to learn the move. We, we, we not only do we the move, we're going to do a take and be like, okay, we lost focus a tiny bit there. Because because not only was Marty running the jib, which is the movement of the camera going, uh, this shot was starting in someone's hands and going up to their face. Not only was Marty learning to do the movement with the camera, but Jason was trying to follow the focus. So both of them have to learn the movement so that Marty could try to replicate the shot exactly the same or make it as correct as possible. And then Jason can be like, okay, about here, I need to be here. It's by feel, it's by look. It's it's definitely, definitely, definitely a hard job. Yeah. yeah. I, it's, it's, I swear yeah. it's the job that throws me. I can jump in at, at any job I feel like and, and, yeah, and do a, a good job at anything. Focus, I need that time. I need lots of practice and figure things out. And if there's suddenly a change, I, I, I can be thrown off just like anybody because it's not easy. Yeah, that's, and uh, that's why filmmaking is such a great art is it's collaborative and you need those people who are specialized. You're, you're specialized and, and you could just be a follow focus person. That could be your whole job. You could just be a steady, cam you, want, you want a job that will get you work, be a steady cam operator. The best steady cam operators work, you know, 350 days a year. If they um, want to. If they want to. But also, most steady uh, steady cam operators suffer from bad, bad knees, backs, back, backs her hernias. Probably bad shoulders. Hernias. Hernias. Never heard of hernias. hernias. Oh, yeah, you're lifting. Uh -oh. You're oh, lifting, okay. yeah. So. Um, the other job that um, we always had on set when we shot uh, Do Not Disturb we always had a focus board. Every single day, we had someone pulling focus. They have their own designated monitor, monitor and they're the whole time making sure that things are um, in focus and, and you know making those changes on the fly. Um, at home, I'm sorry, I think I forgot the remote follow focus. So um, we'll it, try to do another. You see, you'll see someone on set. And uh, I'm going to tell you right now, hopefully, uh, you'll see someone on set like uh, but that's the focus. The remote focus is a, a, a remote piece to that. And uh, I'll have the behind the scenes for my film up soon. 
Uh, and I'm not sh I haven't seen the footage yet, but and who ran the BTS at that shoot? Did we shoot any of the follow focus stuff that Jason was doing? No, I got it. For all your best. So, okay. So then you will get to see the follow focus if you watch uh, captures behind the scenes, which are coming to you soon. So like and subscribe my YouTube channel, and then you get updates as soon as they go up. The one thing I will say um, for those of you, because we we said we talked about it, um, the the kit that I have, um, the remote follow focus, it has three motors that all have separate uh, teeth like that. Um, they mount to the rails just like um, uh, this one does. Um, and then they are remote control powered. The, the power uh, taps into the DTAP on, can you see that on the, the Anton Bauer um, can I see that right gold side? mount plate? Can I see that right side on the... There you go. So there's a DTAP here and also here from the Anton Bauer and the and the gold mount. Um, so they are powered through that. And then the remote has uh, batteries and it has a long, long, long range. I mean, it is, I think it's up to a mile, something like that. But um, you can pull focus from a long distance. Um, and, uh, again, because there's three of them, there could be one for focus, one for aperture and one for zoom, if we used a zoom lens. Um, but it's just a matter of scrolling through the, um, the remote, uh, to get to the, to the three different motors, but we typically put one just on for focus and then you, we watch the monitor to make sure that um, the shot stays in focus. Um, it's fun to set up and use. A lot of people in, enjoy it, but if you're trying to keep things in focus, it's not an easy job. Um, we will use it again this semester, so uh, we'll try to get BTS of that. Um, and then those of you who are here or at the shoots, we'll make sure that you have the opportunity. So you used it last time, didn't you? Or have reused it. What do you think of the remote follow focus? It's really easy to use. Well, no, it's not easy to follow focus, but the actual. Oh, yeah. 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 Cool. So, anyways, um, that's kind of the things that we wanted to talk about. Any other questions or anything at home? Yeah. Uh, I was watching behind the scenes and I saw they had a, a tape measure from the floor up to the camera uh, before the shot. And I was just wondering if that has anything to do with focus. It, it's it is, but not from the floor to the. It's the effects. That's what it is. They're trying to get coordinates in three D space. Oh, have you heard that? Yeah, oh. I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, we might yeah, have advanced. to do that for Marty's. Um, we often so all the really good lenses tell you exactly how how many feet away. Um, so you can even pull focus by looking at the numbers on the lens. Um, but quite often they will measure from the lens to the subject matter. So we know that this is eight feet and this is 12 feet. And so you can go to eight to 12 to, to, for the marks, but yeah. I've never seen the the ground to the lens. We're gonna need that data for Marty's shoot when we shoot in here for the green screen. So my I, angular. I still I still want to do it on, on location. Oh, I, I, I was the one wanting to do it on location. You're the one wanting to do it in the studio. Uh, <laughs> yeah, where well, she's gonna rise yeah. out. Well, you okay. Well, anyways, we'll, we'll, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's good in Marty's film. We have this shot where I think it starts in about a cowboy, and she walks off mm -hmm. in the for toward, towards the forest and, and a long distance until she's a tiny part in the frame. And then all of a sudden she's going to lift up and fly away. She's a witch. Um, and spoilers. <laughs> we're the filmmakers. Um, Marty will be the boss. And so, but anyways, that's one of the things that we're going to be shooting this semester. But we need to ha capture her floating. Um, Jim's so excited about. But we've been arguing about how we're going to do it. You see her floating as a tiny dot? 
Uh, it's no. Story. I'm gonna be film me. <laughs> Not a thought. Still About this distance. Still looks like a body. Can you yeah. come look, Marty? Oh, look. Just look on on the monitor. You want it a little bit further away from the camera? That's about how far back. Okay. <laughs> if we do a cutaway, um, it might be hard to blend. Starting from shot. She's gonna have to even have to start from close. It could just cut straight to her being far away. That makes it really easy. That actually makes it easier now. <laughs> I do like that shot of her walking. Yeah. Cause like what well, if what would if we do it on site and we'd have a blue screen person do a plate shot and then have a person with a, a screen oh. that's walking on front of her. So, I know what I thought we would do would yeah. be to get the shot of her walking. You're talking about uh, and then yeah. cut and then get her to do a get out of frame, yeah. do get the plate, yeah. then put her but you were saying it'd be might, might be difficult to superimpose the lighting if we inside shoot it here. versus yeah, outside. that's why. Yeah, because so. it ever so slightly you'll see it change, but I if it's far far away, I doubt we have it. to get a, a color that Definitely. that will key out easily. Yeah, blue. And blue and green might not work so well. My orange, orange might be the other one that would that would be good. Uh, uh, how much of the how much of the flood <laughs> are you seeing? All the way out of frame. Like how long does she float? Uh, she doesn't float out of frame. She kind of just goes up. Yeah. Up and, and then, then is that the end, the, end the end of the movie you cut? Cut the black. Because mm -hmm. like almost safety orange or something like that would be probably a good. If we're shooting on location. If we're on location, you could also do it to where you shoot it. She walks. Then you get the plate. <laughs> then you get her. Well, actually, what you do is you have her walk. And then you go to where she's going to float and she puts her arms out. Then you have her leave and you get the plate. And then in post, you, you make a freeze frame of when the arms are out and you draw, a, you mask it and use that and animate that. Ooh, that's going to be a pain in the fly. <laughs> For one mask? Yes, because one thing is like, if you're, uh, you're going to have, um, Clothes are not going to be rippling because if she's going to be floating up in the air, there's going to be slow. Well, how range. much are you seeing of the ripple to be? And, and it's also how much is tiny in the frame. It's I, that's be... again like just how how is that show going to be? It's distinguishable that it's still her. She doesn't walk like a mile away, but she's definitely the smallest thing in the frame. Okay. Because like it would be good if we could have like some clothing ripple in some way. In if air. if she's flying fast, but yeah. isn't it is it a slow yeah, it's ascension? Slow. Well, there's probably not going to be as much. In yeah. The, the thing that I'm worried about is the feet. Well, then green screens probably. Um, because I it would be great if her feet could could kind of point a little bit as opposed to but yeah. she's still standing yeah, on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> that would make the. It, the beach should point, yeah, like you're right. However, it is going to be a tiny thing in the frame, yes. and I don't even know if we'll notice some of the things. Yeah, that's that's why yeah. we would have to really talk okay, about it once we get the shot of what she really Well, I can So anyways, it would be, we could almost get something so that she's held by the yes. waist, and and we could then even get a fan, although yeah. I'm there, I'm not sure a fan yeah. or fan her from below be so that above. there's above. Yeah. She's going up. Oh, that would be easy. Down. You could get a, a bounce card with a ladder and yeah. fan yeah. 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 to get some ladder. movement. Yeah, you could just do a plate shot again if there's going to be a ladder. Yeah. So, anyways, um, I, it's going to be fun. There's Tell them about the other special effects shot. Uh, where's the. Yeah, like the the, the familiar appearing behind us kind of thing. That yeah, the shadow shadow so monster. She was in a uh, trial, and she's been kind of banned from the town. So she's walking into the forest. She was about to be like executed. Executed. She ran away. Oh, yeah. But a couple guys with pitchforks follow her into the forest, 
And at one point she turns to face them and and then she has summoned her like familiar her I guess Patronus and it's like really tall, uh dark, shadowy, smoky, antlered figure. Oh, like a demon like like a demon. Yeah. It comes out of like it grows out of a, it's a shadow. Oh, like yeah. a corner out of guy behind her. Yeah. <laughs> and then you could see the guys freaking out because there's the that, image. Is that post? Like, what's what's the, how's what's the effect there? That that's said, no, that's what we said we were going to do. No, there we're talking about both shots, but definitely that one's going to be easiest in the studio because there's no lighting uh, that you're having to match or anything like that. Um, you could just. Uh, so it, uh, we said to get something really tall. Noah wants to do it. <laughs> Put on like a big angle. Oh, mat yeah. And then yeah. Um, yeah. Well, it make it a silhouette and yeah. just change the opacity. Yeah, it makes sense. But I was almost thinking we would do that as a separate shot and then impose that. Yeah. That cost. Yeah. yeah. Good. All right. I think that's going to be cool too. So um, she looks normal, but then there's these two spectacular things that. Yeah. Well, and then flying. So who's your witch? Here. Oh yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, any questions at home? All right. I hope we see you at the uh, premiere premiere on Saturday, and the party afterwards. So Grant switched it. Instead of getting extra credit, you get minus points if you don't show up. <laughs> no, he's kidding. <laughs> but uh, thank you. Um, bye.